In the previous video, we looked at the acoustic guitar down on this track. I want to now move to the lead guitar track right here and just show you what I was doing to this to get it to sit nicely in the mix. It was recorded very nicely, and I love the sound. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Dark Side of the Moon. just move to this section and over to the end really good sound let's solo it and check it out I think at the end it gets a little more distorted. So at the end it does get more distorted and he switches to a pick. In the beginning it's a little less distorted and it sounds like he's plucking it with his fingers, but it's a really cool sound. Not doing too much to this, let's bring up the compressor. This is a 1176 clone made by Bomb Factory, a BF76. Four to one ratio, you know, long release, slow attack, so it doesn't really hurt the attack of the guitar. Let's see what I'm doing. And this is a, you know, emulation of an 1176, so there's no threshold. There's an input and output control. As you can see, I'm really not hitting the compressor at all in this section. Let's see the other one. Couple of dB reduction in that section. Not really that much compression at all on this track. As you can see here, in the beginning, this waveform is lower, so it's going to hit the compressor less. At the end, where the waveform is louder, it's going to hit the compressor more. So if you wanted to change the amount of compression, there is something new in Pro Tools 10 called real-time clip gain. And sometimes I will go in and try to match the waveforms up so they have the same amount of gain. This way, the compression will be more consistent just by increasing or decreasing the clip gain like this. Notice at the end, look how much louder the waveform is compared to the beginning. So to change the amount of compression, I'd have to go in and automate the input gain or threshold. But as you can see here, this plugin has an input and output control only. So if I did go back and use the clip gain, I separate regions like this and try to eyeball up the waveform level here so the compression amount would be more consistent. Since I've already mixed this, I'm going to bring this back down to where they were to zero. Now, usually I tend to do this more on lead vocal tracks and lead instrument parts in a mix. And the waveforms in Pro Tools are pre-insert. A good way to remember this is that anything that actually alters the audio or waveform, be it clip gain, audio suite, pitch, time, any plugin like that will be pre-insert. So anything that alters the audio is pre-insert. Let's move on to the EQ. Not doing much here either, about 2.5 dB at 200 hertz. This frequency range tends to warm up things, guitar, vocals, snare drums. So you have to be very careful when that adding too much 200 hertz into the mix so you do not get a buildup of that frequency. Moving on to some of the effects. Delay, a little bit of the stereo delay that we set up earlier in the mix up here at the aux inputs right there. That is my sound toy stereo ping-ponging delay that we went through in previous video. 
It makes it sit really nice in the track, having the stereo delay left and right and the mono signal in the middle. Down to the reverb, just a little bit of that EMT plate that we set up earlier. And that's about it on this guitar track. Talking about the volume for this lead track, a rule of thumb that I use is that anytime a solo comes in and out, and whatever is around it, say a vocal or another lead instrument, it shouldn't go up or down. It should stay pretty linear in fashion so that you know you have the right level. Let's play a little of this and see where I placed it in this mix. We did mute the lead vocal in the previous video, so let me go back and make that track active. It might take a few seconds for all the DSP to reallocate since there were so many plugins on it. Let's see. Um, it's doing its thing. Okay, some of the inserts could not be made active. Um, let's not worry about that right now. Let me go back down to the lead guitar track and play it now and see how it goes into the vocal. You can hear how when the lead vocal transitioned into the guitar solo, there wasn't that much change in volume. It was pretty linear. It could have been a hair louder, the guitar solo, to the lead vocal, but it still felt pretty good. But it's a good rule of thumb, again, in the transitions from solos to lead vocals and out again, try to pay attention to the transitions in volume. But you have to look at what you balanced first. What I do is I get a relative level for the lead vocal where it sits pretty nice, get a relative level for the guitar solo where it sits pretty nice, and go from there. And then turn on the automation and fine-tune it and try to get a nice transitions between the parts. That's pretty much it for the lead guitar on this track. <laughs> 